Rashawn Slater went down a couple weeks back, and Jamari Salier was tasked with starting at left tackle. And he's done a hell of a job. Between him, Zion Johnson, and Corey Lindsley, you can argue that those three guys lead one of the best offensive lines in the entire league. And truth be told, Austin Eckler and some of the other running backs for the Chargers have been absolute dominant the past couple of weeks. Today we're going to break down the tape, let's jump right into it. Jumping right into this first play, I want to break this play down, because this is a really nice block by the center Corey Lindsley, the right guard Zion Johnson, left guard and left tackle, and I really want to start with the center. If you guys watch the center, him and Zion Johnson have a double. The center gets off and gets up to the linebacker number 44, and he does a really good job sealing him off. In my opinion, Corey Lindsley is one of the top five centers in the league. He's going to do an absolute fantastic job with Zion Johnson. The two really seal off this defensive tackle. After he fully stretches the defensive tackle out, he's going to get up to number 44, and he's going to seal him off as well. And as you're going to see, the running back's going to get the ball, and he's going to end up cutting it right behind Lindsley. This is a really nice job by him. But the left guard, left tackle also do a great job. The left tackle, left guard have a double team block. And the goal is for the left tackle to overtake that defensive tackle. Now they're going to push this guy back so far that they're not able to get off the block. They literally drive him six yards back. And ultimately the left guard is not able to get to the linebacker. But in certain situations, that is absolutely okay. This player right here picks up eight yards because the linebacker literally could not get around the defensive tackle because they drove him so far back. When I watch the block here, and I watch how far they're able to take him, it's a really nice job right there. From left tackle to right guard, they absolutely dominate. Now, two weeks ago, Rashawn Slater ended up going down, and he's going to be out for the season. And naturally speaking, Salier, who started at Georgia the last two years at left tackle, ended up jumping in and starting at the left tackle position. Now, here's the thing. I felt before the season started, watching Salier in preseason, that this guy is probably the future right tackle. And after seeing what he did at left tackle, there's no doubt in my mind that next year he will be the starting right tackle. I think he's going to be a really good right tackle as well. The way he gets out of his stance, the way he gets vertical, the way he punches, the way he doesn't panic when guys are pass rushing, he's very sound in his technique, does a great job latching, mirroring, and doing all the things you want to see in the tackle. This guy looks really good. And I think the Chargers may have found their future at right tackle. Against the Cleveland Browns, Austin Eckler averaged 10.8 yards per attempt, and a big part of that were these massive runs that he had. This play right here went for 71 yards. Ultimately, he didn't score a touchdown, but if you guys watch this play and really break it down, Zion Johnson, the first round right guard out of Boston College, you're going to see him right here, does an absolute fantastic job. He's going to get up to number 50, and he's going to shut him down. Number 50 has the gap that's to the left of Zion Johnson here. And I don't think 50 realized how strong of a grip Zion Johnson has because Johnson was able to grab onto him and absolutely shut him down. Johnson sees it, man. He gets his hands up because he knows he just opened up a massive lane for the running back. But I want to get a little bit deeper into this play because I think right tackle Trey Pipkins also deserves a little bit of credit. Pipkins is going to do a great job taking on Jadavian Clowney. But more so than that, he's going to take that inside step. If you guys look at Clowney, he's almost tempted to come to the inside. And if he's able to get to the inside, he may be able to shut this play down. And ultimately, Pipkins does a great job getting to the inside and making sure to have Clowney go to the outside. He gets that left hand on the underneath of that shoulder pad. And he makes sure to kick his butt so the running back has an actual lane. And he seals it off between him and Zion Johnson, even the center they do an absolute beautiful job here opening up a massive lane for Austin Eckler. Like Eckler goes untouched because the offensive line just straight up dominates. It's a really nice job by all of those guys. Now if this is the first time you're on this channel, do understand we look at positive plays, but we also look at negative plays, which we refer to as teach tape. Salier is going to get crossed on this inside power move by this defensive end. That defensive end is going to blow the play up. Salier takes an outside step, the DN crashes hard. Ultimately, he gets to the running back and he ends up making the play on the running back. Now, this does end up being a face mask, as you guys can see. But in terms of the actual rep, Salier still lost. And in my opinion, the one thing Salier has to work on is going to be his quickness. He got in trouble a couple of times over the past couple of weeks because his lateral quickness was not there. And that's okay. That's something he will develop over the course of his career as he gets more reps in the NFL. Right, mental processing, being able to move left or right, ends up coming with reps. In this play, he ends up getting crossed. 
to the inside as he takes an outside step, and that is okay. It happens. He is going to lose reps. But I did want to just point this play out. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. I want you guys to watch this pull by left guard Matt Feeler. He's a savvy veteran who's been in the league for now for a number of years. Came back out in 2014. He does a really nice job right there. And this play picks up 12 yards. It's a really nice job by the veteran left guard. Just wanted to quickly point that block out. It's a really nice job. Let's get into the next rep. Check this play out right here. Number 68 is taking on Miles Garrett. This is a true pass set. And look at him get out there. And look at the technique. He does a fantastic job right there taking on Garrett. As this play begins, look at how quickly he gets out of his stance. The ball is going to get snapped. He's absolutely the first person that gets out of his stance. He's moving. He uses that 45 degree set. Beautiful job getting to Garrett. Punching Garrett. Locks up. Gets his hands to the inside. Look at that left hand right there. You got that grip on Garrett. Beautiful job. Garrett's going to make his move right there. There's that right swap by Garrett. And look at that readjustment right there. It's a really nice job. Garrett's going to use that right hand right there. And Salier does a nice job readjusting himself with that left hand. That's a really nice rep by a rookie literally starting in his first ever NFL game. Between Jamari Salier, guys like Rashawn Slater, and Zion Johnson, this Chargers offensive line will be a top five offensive line next year. As they're fully healthy with Corey Lindsley, a veteran leading, probably still a top three to four center, this offensive line is going to be the real deal. I think the only thing we'll have to really figure out is can Salier fully adjust to that right tackle spot next year. Not saying Trey Pipkins is a bad football player. I think Salier just has the higher ceiling. Like his potential is through the roof. The guy does so many things at a super top tier level. Look at this block right here by the left tackle on Miles Garrett. He's going to let Garrett go upfield. He's going to turn his hips and he's going to fully seal him off. Because he knows Eckler's going to get the football and run it right underneath him. This is a 10-yard gain because Salier did a great job sealing off Miles Garrett. You know, sometimes these guys that are quick off the line of scrimmage, they're going to want to get upfield, as you're going to see Garrett try to do right here. Salier does a great job getting his hands on him and sealing it off, knowing that the running back is going to run it underneath him. This is a nice heads-up play by Salier, and of course, it goes for 10 yards. Let's get into the next rep. This block by right guard Zion Johnson may be the block of the year right here. Watch as he's going to double team with the center, Corey Lindsley. And he's going to not only make sure to get underneath lift number 97, but then he's going to get up to number 50. And the running back's going to cut it right off of him and take this for a 22-yard touchdown. And when you watch that play in real time, it may not look as impressive, so we're going to slow it down. As this play begins, the center's going to snap the ball. The center's going to make contact with number 97, Look at the shoulder pad of Zion Johnson. Johnson gets underneath number 97, lifts him, and ultimately that lift that he's going to do allows the center to kick his hips. Now Eckler's going to hezzy to the inside and he's going to actually come back around the center, which is exactly what he needs to do in this play. Because the center is flipping his hips and there's going to be a wall right here. And Johnson's going to get up to number 50 and create that second wall. And as Eckler does that hezzy and bounces it back to the outside, he's going to hit the lane. As the play continues, Eckler has these to the inside, gets back to the outside, and look at that wall that was created. Look at Zion Johnson stretching out this linebacker on this block. This is such a great job. Absolutely love this play right here. Shout out to the entire offensive line. Even Matt Feeler. Even left guard does a great job climbing to the second level. Makes contact, gets up to 28, blocks 22. That's such a nice shot by the left guard. Absolute beautiful job. Let's get into the next rep. Now, I study offensive lines. You know, I've studied the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Browns, some of the top tier offensive lines. And what Lindsley and Zion Johnson do on this play, this is top tier. Like, it does not get better and more efficient than that right there. And this play right here picks up seven yards because of what the offensive linemen are able to do. Now, you may not realize it, but as this play is going to begin, the defensive line is going to run a game. Johnson is lined up on that D-tackle. The D-tackle is going to slant hard to the inside. Lindsley sees it. Johnson sees it and passes it off perfectly. You can see the switch happening. Johnson gets to the second guy. And this is the most impressive part. You know, some guys when they run these games are able to create movement and get back towards the quarterback. Drive linemen into the pocket, ultimately collapsing the pocket. But that doesn't happen on this play. The pocket stays clean. These guys do a great job. And Herbert's able to climb that pocket. 
take those two steps needed for the receiver to finish his route and ultimately he's able to get the ball out. That's a really nice shot by the interior offensive line of the Los Angeles Chargers. What the Chargers have done over the past couple of games has been flat out impressive because they've really put it to some of the teams that they have been playing. And truth be told, I think this Chargers offensive line, even without Rashawn Slater, is headed to potentially be one of the best offensive lines. Like this stuff right here is not normal, right? And keep in mind, the Cleveland Browns front seven is not a bad front seven. It features the best defensive end in the NFL and Miles Garrett. And honestly, they pretty much erased him out of this game right here. And the Chargers pretty much ran the ball at will against this Browns defense. And I really like where this Chargers offensive line is headed. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.